are live in Banjul and this is GRTS News at 10 and we're broadcasting for viewers in the Gambia and around the world. Now in our top stories, a new focus on sex education, the Education Ministry and the International Development Research Centre officials launch a fresh effort to revive comprehensive health education. Enhancing infectious disease management, the Ministry of Health graduates its first cohort of public health workers trained on effective disease detection and response management. In sports, Walidan beats Brickham United in post-match penalties to clinch the Football Federation Cup at the Independence Stadium. Away from home, Ukraine denies involvement in a car blast near Moscow that killed the daughter of a prominent Russian nationalist, Daria Dugina. Now elsewhere, Singapore prepares the repeal. It's colonial era law banning gay sex effectively decriminalizing homosexuality well that's the top of the news and much more coming ahead with me mary anjai ajayi many thanks for joining us It's great to have you here. Now we begin with the Ministry of Basic and Secondary Education, which has partnered with International Development Research Center to launch a four-day training for upper basic school teachers on comprehensive health education. Well, the initiative seeks to help effective teaching of reproductive health education for students. Jan Keture witnessed the opening ceremony and she now reports. Comprehensive family life education is a reproductive instruction method based on a tailored curriculum that aims to give students knowledge, attitudes, skills and values to make appropriate and healthy choices in their sexual lives. This group of teachers from upper basic schools within Western Region 1 are undergoing a four-day training on comprehensive health education to serve as trainers in their various schools. The training scheme is geared towards strengthening access to quality, comprehensive health education for in and out of school adolescents. From our research findings, we found a lot of interesting findings, wherein the main finding that we found regarding reproductive health, adolescent sexual and reproductive health issues was a gap, communication gap. Most of them, they skip that, top, that chapter because they lack adequate knowledge because most students nowadays they can challenge them so they cannot teach what they don't know and part of our implementation and that was like the recommendation given during the dissemination we find it very important to train the teachers so that the teachers can start talking about the issues that we are talking talking about here in the gambia reproductive health education is a major concern and a growing challenge with reports indicating that Parents and religious groups believed comprehensive sexual education goes against cultural or religious values and can have a corrupting influence on kids. Fatu Dali Bite, Principal Education Officer Mopsi, and the Health Ministry's Dr. Musa Marena hailed the timeliness of the training, underscoring the importance of monitoring and evaluation for the program success. There are a lot of taboos, cultures around talking about sexuality, but when we talk about sexuality, it's not only the act, there is more to that. And uh, through these four days, we'll get to know more about that. Teachers are one of the most important uh, group of people that have influence in society uh, because they deal with the young people. And we all know that uh, as a developing country, we have more young people than the elderly. And these are the young people who will become adults in the future. For us who are part of the, who are working within the reproductive health area, um, if we want to have an impact in the future, we need to start early. And how do we do that? We have to partner with teachers. Topics being discussed here include communication on puberty, menstruation, unwanted pregnancy and STIs. 
Cheering their expectations, participants noted that lessons learned will be used to address the physical, social, and emotional aspects of health in their curriculums. The research training project is funded by the International Development Research Center with the overall aim to design and implement relevant school and the community-based programs introducing discursive sessions with adolescents and youth networks to strengthen access to quality comprehensive health education. Janke Ture, JATIS News. Well, we're staying with Health Matters because the Directorate for Health Promotion and Education under the Ministry of Health is joining forces with the Center for Disease Control and Prevention and African Field Epidemiology Network to enhance infectious disease management in the Gambia. Well, a team of public health workers who underwent a nine-month field epidemiology training program recently graduated as the first cohort in the Joint Infectious Disease Management Program. Well, Isa Dujata Gassama reports. Nine-month training program in epidemiology marks another achievement by the health ministry to enhance the capacity of public health and surveillance officers. The training aims to strengthen disease detection and response building capacity to effectively tackle viral infections. The AFINET head of programs, Dr. Ditu Kazambu, highlighted the benefits of the first intermediate cohort in the Gambia. Transform into confident frontline surveillance officers with improved skills on ground in the identification of public health threats and contributing to timely initiation of appropriate response action. This core of epidemiologists that will graduate today will provide the following benefits to the country, among others. One is building a stronger culture of database decision making a network of well-trained surveillance officers in the country, and also have increased capacity for research to improve surveillance systems. U.S. epidemiologist Dr. Ellen Yard from Center for Disease Control and Prevention, who was highly impressed with the work of the Medicare graduates, pointed out support areas being advanced by United States to assist the Gambia amid limited resources. We are so proud of the investment that we've made. You know, we didn't fund the Gambia because it rhymes with Zambia. And we didn't choose to fund the Gambia. We didn't fund every country. Mm -hmm. You know, CDC only has limited resources. And we had to choose which country we wanted to spend this money in. And we purposefully selected Gambia mm -hmm. because of the success that they had in implementing Frontline. Yeah. And we knew that there would be no problem implementing intermediate here. WHO representative Dr. Destatruni expressed his organization's partnership with the Gambia to complement the efforts of the health ministry, urging graduates to apply what they have learned into practice. What matters is not the knowledge. What matters is what you put on practice. So that's what I want to say to you. The moment you acquire the knowledge, and if you keep it for yourself and never use it, it's as good as you have not learned anything. So you, you, you will really, your impact will be appreciated only when you act. I have seen your assessment. It's very, very useful, very, very insightful about how ideas are perceived and practiced in the Gambia. It's very important information. I was very keen. The words of CDS Yogwadrami are anything to go by. Partnerships will bring immense progress in the work to build an effective infectious disease system. Given the intensive training program, both theoretical and practical, you've achieved, I'm very convinced, beyond all reasonable doubt, that you are better prepared and equipped to make quality contribution to the healthcare system of this great nation, the Gambia. Teamwork is not a matter of persuading yourself and your colleagues 
to set aside personal ambition for the greater good. Rather, teamwork is a matter of recognizing your personal ambition and the ambition of the team are one and the same. The EIS produced what we call disease detectives. And I'm glad to see these committed officers graduate in similar step-down training for future epidemiologists. This training model, called the FETP, has shown not only to be relevant in disease spread intervention, but also in keeping the populace safe as it was experienced during the Ebola outbreak, the current COVID-19 pandemic, recent missiles outbreak, and current unexplained events. These graduates were taken through vital practices in disease epidemiology, introducing fundamental skills, using advanced surveillance to detect, research, and drive case investigations of outbreaks for effective response. For the news, I am Isabujata Gasama. Now, the drive to promote access to primary health care has partnered the Sarek Gubu Students Association with village youth and diasporans from the community. Now, over the weekend, the village launched its first free medical screening for residents of the Sandu community and surrounding settlements. Ibrahim Abba traveled to Sarek Gubu and he now reports. This is the first such development in the village of Saregubo and surrounding communities, a free medical screening and prescription scheme initiated by mutual partnership between the students, alumni, youth and diaspora associations of Saregubo village in Sandu, Upper River region, brings critical Medicare support for communities in the far-flung settlement. Over $100,000 was invested in the program which is simply plowing back to the community to deliver essential health care needs for a period. Speaking to GRTS at the sidelines of the event, Mohamed Esba, president of Saragubu Students Association, highlighted the importance of primary health care, particularly for rural people. The reason why we uh, come up with this thing is to facilitate help. As we know, health care is, is, is the most important thing in the day-to-day -day activities of each and every poor person. So in that case, we see it is necessary for us to come back to our community, give them uh, this medication so that everybody will be in a good condition uh, to go ahead with his or her own activities. Program beneficiaries, including the village imam, Mamadou Lamin Ba, Tijan El Ba, and Jenaba Jallo, all thank organizers hailing the timeliness of the exercise. A nurse volunteer for the program, Mamadou S. Jallo, gave an account of common health issues they observe in the community. The patient I have seen right now um, are usually hypertensive patients. Yeah, m most of the cases I saw right now, they are high blood patients. I think it's a common condition that is affecting um, our um, people in the Gambia here. The simple message that I will uh, advise Gambians or any person who is affected is to visit the health facility whenever they are diagnosed with being having hypertension. Because like it has been said, hypertension is a silent killer. At the end of the medical camp, the remaining drugs were donated to the Diabugu Minor Health Center to complement government's effort in providing equitable and affordable drugs in public health facilities. After issuing drugs, we have some remains of drugs. Um, we decided the VDC, in collaboration with uh, the village youths, we decided um, to bring the remains of the drugs to our district health center, which is the Agubu Health Center. Health, you know, is not individual. Health is not only for uh, government. You see, teamwork, community have to do the part. Government did the part, and individually also. That's why it's collective teamwork. So we really appreciate uh, it's, and it's a great honor for me and my staff. We will see what best we can do, at least for every month, periodically. Mashallah, we'll see what best we can do. With the introduction of community ambulance services in different parts of the country, community-led initiatives like this scheme will fast-track efforts to achieve universal access to basic health care service delivery in the Gambia. Ibrahim Abba, GRTS News. 
Starfish International, the Gambia recently graduated its first cohort of students in various fields of studies. The academy, as we hear in this report by Fatu Diba, is committed to empowering young people in career development and leadership. Let's take a look. These students are the latest cohort graduated by the academy. After four months of intensive career training in leadership, in a drive to impact positive change in their communities. Today is it's definitely a jam-packed program because so much has happened. Like I mentioned, we had over 20 classes and all of these were surrounded around these themes of Genesis and Legacy. So this entire summer program has been run by our mentors, um, looking at the talents and skills they have passed down. Committed to girls' education and advocacy, this is the key intervention areas of the organization, mentoring young people to become productive and responsible leaders in the future. In this class, I learned to be a courteous leader and a better person who thinks much about people as much as I think about myself. I have learned what it means to be a team and work together as a team, understanding that we come from different places with different personalities, but just bonding and working together is the key. Guest speaker Aysa Tuba called for collective action to empower young people to become responsible and productive members in their various communities. I believe these young ones that have been already within the system of Starfish International will not let go. For the parents, I will also commit you and I will want you to commit yourself in return. Support your kids to upgroom these resources in them. Mamiya Sinsar, the founder of the school, challenged the graduates to utilize the knowledge for societal benefits. Fatudiba for GRTS News. Off now to Soto Khoi, where the Village Development Committee embarked on a tree planting exercise at Soto Khoi Forest and a school in the community. Residents planted almost 10,000 trees as part of a new effort to contain the effects of climate change. Well, our Aminati E. Sanyang tells us more. To restore Sotokoi's once blooming forest cover intensify with a new crusade planting thousands of trees to expand the vast green belt of the community's famous natural cover. Pioneered by the Village Development Committee, the Ecological Initiative aims to curtail the effects of climate change and protect the environment. Coming out in large numbers to plant different species of trees, residents of Sotokoi are keen on maintaining the area's thick forest cover. It was done by our fathers, but now they are getting old, so the younger ones are coming in to take part. To take Fathers were doing we expect more people because today is the starting point. That's why many of us don't hear the information earlier. But I hope in the next two weeks we we'll get more trees to plant. Today we planted 10,000 trees. Today we are planting Malena, um, but um, previous years um, our villagers, the elders, were also doing such. But for us um, as Village Development Committee, we assume office this year. So we take it prudent as it is our obligation, you know, to give out to the community. This is why we recognize this um, uh, tree planting exercise. With concerns anchored on sustainability, natives of this village are committed to ensuring the trees planted here are fully protected. Trees were also planted in the premises of the village school by the committee as they moved to boost green spaces in the West Coast community. The rainy season is a crucial time for environmentalists and communities to embark on numerous tree planting exercises. This, according to experts, will help reduce global warming and air pollution, as well as help provide natural climate solutions. Aminata Isanya, GRTS. The Development Association, with support 
from Gambian diasporans in, Gamb in Germany rather recently donated medical items to Sare Musa Health Post in Jara District. Now the donation, as Usman Balde reports, is aimed at complementing government's efforts to expand the health care uh, delivery. Let's take a look in this report. Sare Musa Health Post Center is operating an outpatient department services, among other operations in providing basic health care services to the people. Speaking at the forum, the village health worker Tuba Nyoso and Al Hajin Dong, the advisor of Kabada Development Association, both stressed the need for honesty and accountability in promoting service delivery in the health post. Jibril Sane, principal health nursing officer in the Lower River region, said his office is committed to expand the health care delivery as the center is providing many services for the satellite communities before patients are transferred to Jarasoma District Hospital. For his part, the vice president of Kabada Development Association, Alaji Jalo, dilated on the support given to the helpers. We consulted Women's Life Matters. That's what they call to the organization, Women's Life Matters based in Germany. They are Gambian, combined of um, Sare Musa, Buyam, Farafene, Eseu, Njau. Those are the people who mobilize all the resources and share them according to level of facilities available at your place of This is why we have this material here. Alu Balde, the National Assembly member for Jara West, said the donated materials will go a long way in enhancing quality service delivery and improve positive outcome. He also calls on government to help in the construction of a high standard hospital in the area. The help post used to, used to receive so many patients in a day. That is the surrounding villages and deep inside Kasamas. We want the government to upgrade it to a very high standard health center. Sidi Laminpa, the governor of Lower River Region, held the donors for their wonderful contribution in complementing government's efforts in improving the country's health sector. The Gambia government, you may be aware, is here for the Gambian people. And anything that is for the development of this country, the Gambia government wants to see that the Gambian people are at the helm of, of the, its affairs. We even also witnessed a presentation of $11,000 check to Sare Musa Health Post by Kabada Development Association to purchase drugs for the Health Post. Usman Balde, GRTS News. We'll now take a short break and when we return, sports news is up next. Don't go away. <laughs> COVID-19 ka jek na yo, nda a jek ataka anonoy o kuto puna waga o much fu paslof. O ton refe pro janga pengu. COVID-19 pengu nek a wora to a jek ga onjirin. A waga ngu muchil, bo jek kiro jirlek. COVID-19 pengu nek, a jek ga nulopitan kender nan sakhle fop. To mette ref na, o leng da fit kiran. Mette ref na na gambian diki, sakhle jenga a fason ngata daka pengu. O ton ref, Johnson & Johnson, Pfizer, Sinopharm, to dene fop chale leng krek ambiya. O ton ref, pro de much long, Mujir lek ando na ten ref COVID-19. Baro lega habong, baro jiru, wala sa te warong. Ke ref na kene nen Gambia Ministry of Health. O ten ref ye fop anjang apengu nek. Jege goro deb, jege omar. Ke khot tuna we jeng nakid harba hai fudik. Ba are tok. La hadi hap hai fake, bo den gol. Fu sa fu, o ten ref anyoke ando na ten moji yob amonyo nyof pour te mut long nu COVID-19. La hadi wari fu sa fu, wakhtu nu tarif na. Surtu o fadangan binof, wala o jalandof. Baru cedok lagi ngapai? Waktu fu aku tahu kau na, wala otis soli, wala sah balah onyama, laga dia apa efek apa dengan golf susah fu, wala sah ojang, alah kahol base hand rom, kek fop pur awak gomu cuk nu covid nineteen. Waktu fu terif na, import tak apa lasa ke indo na apa inak ke? Kom, atau boleh ke def na nu pau ke? Wala na cila nak ke? Import tak dengan fu klorain, wala alkohol solution. Minister of Health dia beri masa apa in muk nu covid nineteen. Aku dah kira pasai nak fop awen jema, kurang banyak lima anu nene dan jago covid nineteen nusahe. Kian tahu ina fop faf inge nor isat lagi nor, nanyoke anu nene inwe nyokoran fuk covid nineteen. We atan un kibar negen def Minister of Health for the Gambia Country Coordinating Mechanism. Fundamental nene anu nere inora Global Phone. We anu nene nanyokora fuk AIDS, TB, wala malaria. Oh bukan anten kah kor nor. Waga o call it ten twenty five.
Welcome back. Now in sports, the Blue Boys Walidan Football Club make changes for their poor performance in the league as they defeated Brikama United to clinch the Football Federation's title in a post-match penalty shootout following a stalemate, goalless draw in regulation time. Well, our sports correspondent Momodu S. Jalo witnessed that uh, encounter and he now tells us more in this report. Walidan's appetite for winning trophies continues as the Blue Boys lifted another silverware and salted it in their already rich trophy cabin by winning the FF Cup final here at the Independence Stadium after beating Pitama United in a post-match penalty shootout by four goals to two after the game had ended in a goalless stalemate. Both Pitama United and Walidan had a disappointing season in the league and this was a perfect opportunity for both sides to at least put some smiles on the faces of their fans. After both sides have played a goalless 90 minutes, the tie was forced into a dramatic post-match penalty shootout and Walidan kept their nerves to win by four goals to two. With their goalkeeper, the hero of the day, saving two penalties, preventing two of the Pekama players from scoring from 12 yards. And Walidan were cool and composed by scoring all four of their kicks to win FA Cup trophy and add another piece of silverware to their already rich trophy cabin. And this were the reactions of the two coaches after the game, beginning with Pekama United's Modlam uh, Nyasi. We, we are playing with uh, uh, senior champions. Walidan is a big team, uh, bigger than Pekama United. Of course, uh, Pekama United is growing. But then, I mean, uh, this is football, we came to win. But then uh, you look at the football, uh, um, uh, we end up drawing. And then, you know, uh, going to 5 by 6 you know, if sometimes people will say it's, 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 it's luck. So um, I think they, they deserve the win because they all play a good football. Yeah. I will say we have a bad season. Obviously, um, uh, end up ending, uh, starting very good in the first round. And then um, second round was very woeful. And then, I mean, we, we need to rectify our mistakes and all those um, uh, what happened in the in the second round in the FF Cup. But then that's football for you. Uh, um, sometimes the best team win, sometimes the best team will not win. So um, I think congratulations to Walidan. We had a very good preparation. I think we have a better preparation than any other club here. We went to Saudi Arabia. We worked so hard for this. We wanted to win both the league and the FF Cup. But unfortunately, we couldn't get the league. One thing, I mean, I've had a lot of criticism. That's fine, it's football. Um, we had a lot of injuries, a lot of injuries. I mean, players were going up and down, up and down, right? Coming in and out. I mean, when we regroup, I mean, we've already lost the league. I told the players, look, we can't, we can't. If we lose the league and the FF Cup, it's a failure, total failure. So we got to win one. At least we've lost the league, then we focus on the FF Cup. And fortunately for us today, I mean, we did. And we did it in great style. Like you said, playing this final is not about keeping possessions or I mean, counting, I mean, the stats, no. All you wanted to do is today's game just to lift the trophy. The FF Cup final brought to an end the 2021-2022 GFA football season with Hawks Football Club crowned champions of the league and Walidan lifting the FF Cup final. The two teams are now expected to represent the Gambia in continental club football. Mohamed Jalo, Jata Sports at the Independent Stadium. Well, a big congratulations to the team there. Well, now we will take another quick break and when we return, we will look at um, the weather news. COVID-19 lo amla. Waye amna ay sarta yo xamne soko topé mun nga mucca yak sa njabot moy nga ñakku ñakku covid 19 bi or nati amna njeriñ mun na la ar bedo febar ñakku covid 19 bi amna ci bep health facility ci rewi gambia ñakku bi kenn du ko fay fim nek ni rew mi amna ñetti fasso ngi ñakku muy johnson and johnson pfizer ak sinopharm ñom ñepp benn liggey lañu def moy ar la ci covid 19 infection buñ la wala bul febar wala muy la ray li me beti di gambia ministry of health moy pour ñaku ñep mak ak ndaw be ci ñi am fukki ak ak ñaar jëm ko rahasam loxo bem set nim waré ak 
ak sab moy xex bi gëna yomb gëna gaaw ci musnu ci covid 19 di raxasu ak sab waxtu bu nek surtout so eggé sa kër wala sa bëre bi liggéey kay bul jox kenn loxo sa yo saxaté wala nga tissoli ak it bala nga sax ñam raxasul be set ak ndox ak sab wala nga jëfëndeko alcohol based hand rope li yëpp pour musnu ci covid 19 té ñuy fompa waxtu bu nek rek bërëp yi ñoo tek loxo niki suñu tabuli wañi wala tabuli liggéey kay diko fompé ak chlorine wala alcohol solution ministry of health ne buñ nagu muk ci covid 19 depuis ñaari at ci gannaaw jëm nañ bu baax be wañi lim bu takku bi amone ci covid 19 li lé tax dañ wara bolo and xex covid 19 ndax nak kenn muccut nañ len xex bi ñepp mucca xibar bi ñi len ko doon indil di wa ministry of health ak the gambia country coordinating mechanism ak nimbal bu baye ko ci global phone ñi di xex aids tb ak malaria pour xam ci lu gëna leer mën ngeena call 1025 Welcome back. And now to the internationals as Ukraine has denied any involvement in a car bombing near Moscow that killed the daughter of a prominent Russian nationalist. Daria died in the blast. Both she and her father, Alexander Dugin, have publicly supported Russia's war on Ukraine. Russia's foreign ministry speculated that Kyiv might be behind the bombing. But an advisor to Ukraine's president said his country was not a terrorist state. Investigators sift through the remains of the SUV driven by Daria Dugina. They say an explosive planted in the vehicle killed the 29-year-old TV commentator. The power of the explosion was evident. Parts of the Toyota Land Cruiser were strewn across a large area. Her father, Alexander Dugan, may, however, have been the target of the attack. Russian state media said Dugan was intending to travel in the vehicle, but changed his mind at the last minute. Both Dugan and his daughter were on their way to Moscow after they attended a cultural festival. Alexander Dugan is one of the staunchest allies of President Vladimir Putin and a far-right philosopher and author. He has been pushing for a revival of the Russian Empire. His daughter, although less known, was also a prominent member of the ultra-nationalist movement supporting Russia's invasion of Ukraine. She called for genocide of Ukrainians, she called Ukrainians a subhuman race, she called for public uh, public uh, killings of Ukrainian prisoners of war, etc. So yes, she's a, uh, Dugin's daughter, but she is, first of all, a very active member of uh, Russian uh, far-right nationalist neo-Nazi uh, influential scene. A spokesperson for Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky has denied Kyiv was involved. But pro-Russian separatists say Ukraine was behind the blast. And Russia's foreign ministry spokeswoman Maria Zaharova said if the investigation's trail led to Ukraine, it would amount to state terrorism. Well, Singapore will repeal its colonial era law banning gay sex, effectively decriminalising homosexuality. The Prime Minister made the announcement at the annual National Day Rally, saying that society was more accepting of gay people. He added that he hoped this would provide some relief to gay Singaporeans. However, the Prime Minister stressed that there would be no change in the legal definition of marriage as being between a man and a woman. Well, let's take a closer look with this report. It's a historic day for Singapore's LGBT community. Singaporean Prime Minister Lee Sing Long has announced the city-state will repeal a law that bans gay sex. 
the government will repeal Section 377A and decriminalize sex between men. I believe this is the right thing to do and something that most Singaporeans will now accept. Section 377A of Singapore's Penal Code was introduced under British colonial rule. It punishes gay sex for up to two years in prison. The government's previous stance was to keep the law while promising not to enforce it. But gay people say they still face discrimination. Lu Yangfa, the executive director of the Singaporean LGBT charity Uga Chaga, told Pink News. Decriminalization will not only improve the lives of LGBT people and their families, but will bring other obvious benefits to business, trade and Singapore's international reputation, making this announcement welcome on many fronts. However, Lee said the government will not change the country's legal definition of marriage as being between a man and a woman. This means it's highly unlikely same-sex marriage will be legalized in Singapore. You're watching us live from Banjul and I am Mary Anjai Ajayi. Well, before we go, a quick look at our top stories once more. A new focus on sex education, the Education Ministry, an international development research center officials launched a fresh effort to revive comprehensive health education. Enhancing infectious disease management, the Ministry of Health graduated its first cohort of public health workers trained on effective disease detection and response management. In sports, while it unclinches, the Football Federation Cup beating Brickhammer United in post-match penalties at the Independent Stadium. Away from home, Ukraine has denied any involvement in a car blast near Moscow that killed the daughter of a prominent Russian nationalist. Elsewhere, Singapore is repealing its colonial-era law, banning gay sex, effectively decriminalizing homosexuality. Well, that's it um, for this edition of the news, and thank you for watching GRTS News at 10. And do enjoy the rest of our programs here on GRTS TV. Many thanks.